Greetings to the entire staff at Trinity College of Florida. My name is Dustin Zerwas, and I'll be graduating on May 8, 2021. And I want to take just a few moments just to thank everyone, those from the janitorial team all the way up to the president. As you see, a lot of times in life, we can go through and just kind of push through things and we can feel burnt out, upset and frustrated. And I want to take just a few moments just to explain a little bit more about my journey before, during and after Trendy. As when I was 12 years old, I moved down from Minnesota to Port Ritchie, Florida, and God changed everything. On September 11, 1997, I found myself at Golfie Grace Church and Pastor Paul began to explain about God's grace, this gift that he has given us, which is a relationship through Jesus Christ. And I accepted Jesus Christ on that day and my life changed dramatically. As I spent a lot more time with Pastor Paul and the youth leaders, I realized at the age of 16, I wanted to become a youth pastor. I wanted to work in full-time ministry because it was so vital for people to understand the good news of Jesus Christ and then build their lives on a biblical foundation. It was in this time period that I found my future wife in our youth group. And after, after high school, I went to Word of Life Bible Institute in Florida. And then from there, I got married and life just kind of happened. My wife and I, we kind of began to work in different areas. We began fostering. And so we actually, through the course of our marriage, uh, we've adopted eight children. It was in this same time period that God was doing some incredible things that I did not even know. Fast forward a little bit, in 2015, my 11-year-old son was diagnosed with cancer. And it was in these types of conversations I had with doctors was the, the thing that was constantly brought up was give them something to look forward to. And so we tried to find different things, ask them different questions. And I remember distinctly, there was a moment that we had in his journey it was a time that I was driving back with him from Jacksonville after having uh, proton therapy. And we had the radio off, which was kind of you know different. We just started talking. And I was asking him, hey, what are some things that you want to do maybe later in life? And he was like, well, Dad, I want to go to college. I want to become a pastor. I want to become a speaker. I said, that is incredible, Randy. And then he turned to me and said, tell me about your college experience. And it was kind of difficult a little bit. I kind of explained, I went to Word of Life Bible Institute. And then about four or five years later, our church tried doing like a satellite college where our pastor and we had some professors that kind of taught us. And so the school that we were doing was kind of a newer school. It was accredited. And we did about three years of work. And they came back and there was just some issues with the grading stuff. We tried fixing some of that stuff and it just fell flat. And we stopped didn't get any credit. I said, I got a lot of biblical wisdom. I got a lot of applications to use within our family, within ministry, but that was about it. And I felt kind of, you know, upset a little bit. I'm like, I, I didn't close that door in a sense. I didn't finish that. And on December 12th, 2017, about almost a year after our conversation, my son Randall passed away and he did it incredible things. So lots of things are documented how he even, you know, one of his prayers was that people would see Jesus through his circumstances. I met Randall a few uh, years ago. I work with an organization called Passion. I'm a pastor of a church called Passion, and we have a band called Passion, and we were doing a worship night in Florida called Passion Worship Night. And through our office, a call came and said, there's a family, uh, we were in South Florida on the Tampa side, there's a family that really wanted to come to the concert, but their son, Randall, has been through several surgeries. He has um, a tumor behind his eye. He's in a situation right now that kind of knocked him out of being able to come to the concert this, uh, I think it was a Friday or a Saturday, I don't remember what night it was. And when we heard that, we were like, okay, well, Randall can't come to the concert, so we can take the concert to Randall. And so a few guys in the Passion Band and myself went to the hospital where Randall was in the cancer wing of the Children's Hospital, and 
we didn't know anything about their family really. We didn't really know anything about Randall and I remember going down the hall and going to his room and Dustin stepped out and we met and we we're like, how's Randall feeling? And he goes, oh, it's been a really, really rough few days. And you, you know, I don't know if you've ever been in that situation before. Some of you have had parents or brothers and sisters who've been in long-term medical situation, but it's just, you know, it's, you don't know walking through that door for the first time and the door opened and there was Randall in his a hospital bed with, I don't know, 50 contraptions it seemed like in that room. And, and we just knew a, a tiny bit of the kinds of surgeries that he had had, the kind of things that he faced in the future. And we walked in and we were just trying to be light and be love and be joy in the moment. And the Passion Band guys was a big deal to Randall because he was like, man, that's the guys. I hear you on the radio. That's amazing. I was coming to your concert, but you're standing in my hospital room right now. And we hung out for a while, and then we got to the end, and we said, Randall, we want to pray for you. And the way we said it to him was the same way I would say it to you if, if you were in a situation like that or any kind of situation, not just we're going to start praying, but I said, Randall, we're all here. And I was sort of setting this up, if you can follow my train of thought, because I don't want to just say it right out, but we were trying to set Randall up. So I said, Randall, we're here in faith. We're here in the name of Jesus. We're here believing in a big God. We're going to pray today, and we're going to seek heaven on your behalf. How would you like for us to pray for you? And he just, without blinking, looks at me and he says, pray that through my situation, a lot of people will see Jesus. He was 12 years old, I think, at the time. 12 years old at the time. Sufficiently in a battle that he's not on earth today. Pray that through my situation, a lot of people will see Jesus. And I was like, oh, Randall, we're gonna pray for that, man. We are absolutely gonna pray for that. What's another way that you would want us to pray for you? Sort of setting it up again. Because I'm telling you, we're here in faith and we know God's sovereign and God does what he wants to do. And none of us know all the time how God wants to work. But what's another way you would want us to pray for you? Well, this has been really hard on my brothers and sisters. Would you pray for them? I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, Saint Randall. I didn't know that we had come to the room of a holy man of God. <laughs> I'm telling you, it made a mark on me. Randall's life made a mark on me. I got to be around Randall several other times from that time, but his life made a mark on me. Not when he was out of college, not when he was married, not when he had figured out his life track, not when he had gotten a job and had money and could give something back to the ministry, not when he had sort of like a, a, a platform to stand on. He made a mark on my life as a 12 and a 13 year old teenager. And it was impactful because after his, his passing a few months later, I began to process lots of different things with with people, I began to look through all the notes, the journals that he kept. And it wasn't until later in 2018 that I found myself sitting in Panera Bread with Pastor Paul, who's our lead pastor, and myself and John Keller. And John Keller was explaining that, listen, we have some stuff for students, but we also have stuff for adults. And he began to I could sense that God was using him that day just to say, listen, we have a thing for the adults called Quest. We have this program where you can come on Mondays, one day a week. And I'm like, it's my day off. And we come for four hours a night. I'm like, well, okay, well, it's not too bad. And I just sense God leading me towards this. And as I began to fill out the application, I began to make a self-declaration to myself. And I said that the time that I spent at Trinity College, I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to study hard because John began to explain, like, listen, we have a, because I'm a youth pastor. And he says, well, we give a pastoral discount. We also, with all your kids, you can apply for FAFSA. I'm like, okay, so I probably, I can get free college. 
and I said, I want to apply myself. But the most important thing that I, I wanted to do was that the day that I graduate, because my son couldn't graduate, that when I walk across that stage on May 8th, that I'm not just walking for myself, I'm walking for my son. And I'm so grateful for the time at Trinity, all the professors, those on staff who have helped me in the process, in the journey that I had at this time at Trinity. I'm so grateful. I would do anything to help out Trinity College in the future. But it was in these moments that I, I felt God even moving me in another direction too. As over the past year, I felt God leading me to higher education. And so I began to pray, God, where do you want me to go? Like, what do you want me to do? I really can't just pick up and move because of everything else in my life. And God guided me and directed me. And I just fell out one application. And then in December of 2020, I got an email saying I was accepted to Dallas Theological Seminary. And I broke down with tears of joy because this is something that my family has never stressed with college. And I'm so grateful for those who invested their time and energy. And I'm grateful for the fact that I put so much energy and effort into my time at Trinity. And I want to let everyone know that the time and energy you invest in the lives of students is so impactful because sometimes we don't realize where God is leading that person. And again, thank you so much. And I am appreciative for my entire time at Trinity. And keep doing what you're doing. Keep searching after what God's purpose and plan is for your life. Keep studying scripture. Keep investing in the lives because you have no idea the eternal effects that this has. Thank you again so much. And I will do my very best to be a, first an ambassador of Jesus Christ and then one of Trinity College. And thanks again for the amount of time and investment that you have given into my life. Thank you. And he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23.